We are now joined by Dave Levin Levinthal. Thank you. Uh, excuse me for that. He's the editor in chief, Raw Story. Dave, sorry to get your name wrong. Forgive me for that. He is joining us from Washington, D.C. Dave, how Great are to you? Be here. I'm doing well and happy <laughs> Super Tuesday, although not a very Super Tuesday this time around. <laughs> not. Tell us more about that. How crucial are the Super Tuesday primaries for Republicans? So traditionally, Super Tuesday is a huge day. There's a great deal of drama. There's competitive races, either on the Democratic side or the Republican side. But as you alluded to just a moment ago, the results are a foregone conclusion this time around. Joe Biden is absolutely going to sweep on the Democratic side in his quest to become the president of the United States for a second four-year term. And Donald Trump on the Republican side, he has token opposition in, in Nikki Haley. But Nikki Haley, as you mentioned, has only won one contest out of the ones that have been conducted so far. And we fully expect that Nikki Haley is going to lose just about every single one here on Super Tuesday, she doesn't have much of a chance of gaining any ground on Donald Trump. She will only lose ground. Dave, what are Americans who have registered to vote saying about this year's elections in general? What's the perception, the predictions, or even the hopes? Well, right now, for, for going to the nominating conventions in the United States, which will take place for Republicans in July, the Democrats in August, that too is a foregone conclusion that uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden for their respective parties are gonna be those nominees. So it's really just a formality between now and the summertime for the two candidates to, to go and march toward that eventuality where they become the official nominees of their parties. So really right now the voters are uh, either excited about Donald Trump and Joe Biden, at least to some degree, but there are others and many Americans across the country who are not happy about the fact that this is all, almost certainly going to be a repeat, a rerun of the 2020 election when, of course, Donald Trump was defeated by Joe Biden. We're going to have the same two candidates all over again. They are four years older. It has not necessarily been a great four years for the United States uh, on balance for a number of reasons, be that the pandemic, economic turbulence, uh, just a uh, crime is an issue, immigration is a big issue. You put that all together and uh, a lot of people are just not enthusiastic necessarily about having the same two candidates all over again, although that's likely what is going to be the case. Dave, I'm so sure that uh most Americans are not so enthusiastic about Nikki Haley. But what do you think will happen to Nikki Haley? Or what do you think she will do after she loses to Donald Trump? She has proven to be a tough nut to, try, to actually crack. Yeah. So she really has two choices here. Number one, she could just simply drop out. And, and that, that is quite possibly going to happen, where she will announce either tonight or tomorrow or sometime this week that she's going to step out of the race and no longer continue forward. But there is a scenario, and also equally plausible, where she decides that even though she knows she's not going to win the nomination, she will stay in the race. And, and there are two reasons for that. Number one, she can just continue to serve as that voice of opposition in these contests going forward, serving as really just a, a, an antagonist for Donald Trump intramurally within the Republican Party. But there's also another factor here, too. Donald Trump, he's 77 years old. He's going to turn 78 this spring. He, he is not a young man. There is the, the possibility, it's not a zero possibility, that Donald Trump could have a medical issue or a health issue that would force him to either temporarily or even permanently go off the campaign trail and not continue on with his bid. Nikki Haley wants to be in a position, were that to happen, to say, all right, let me be the standard bearer for this party. I can go and I can beat Joe Biden. I can be a viable candidate for the Republic, although she would almost certainly have other competition were that scenario to happen. And Donald Trump, of course, is facing a huge, huge legal cloud that continues to hang over his head and is only going to get worse as this year goes forward. He is party to four separate felony criminal cases, 91 charges across those cases pending against him. And those trials are going to start, at least one or two of them, very soon, within a matter of weeks or a couple of months. He's going to have to grapple with that. And 
Nikki Haley, she she hasn't said it yet, but she may say in the future, we can't have a president of the United States or Republican nominee who is trying to run for president or serve as president from behind bars. Mm -hmm. That's literally the level of uh, discourse that I think we can expect going forward in the country right now on the Republican side. I've been talking to Dave Leventhal. Yes, I got it right right now, uh, this time around. So, good. Editor in chief raw story dave thank you very much for talking to us today it's been my pleasure thank you for all the latest news download the we on app and subscribe to our youtube channel